Hello, everyone. Sorry for being in the wrong room, but I'm glad I found you guys finally. Um, glad to see a lot of people here today. Um, let me rename myself quickly. So this is the first class, I believe, of this session. So I'd like to welcome everyone. I'm actually filling in for someone else. My name is David. If you have any questions, you can just um, call me that. But we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, for the next few classes next week and later on, there will be someone else who will be teaching you guys. So hopefully you'll get to meet them soon. Yeah, <clears throat> but okay. Hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Uh, let me share my screen and someone please let me know if we're able to see it. Okay. All right. <laughs> sure. Okay. All right, let's see. So can someone see what I'm sharing right here right now? Contents chapter one. Anyone, you can type in the chat and let me know. You can um, let me know by saying it as well. Anything is okay. Thumbs up, sure, that works. All right, thank you guys. <clears throat> so um, basically for this class, um, we will be going through, I'm not sure if you have taken similar classes, but We'll be going through this textbook. Currently in chapter one, we are going to be talking about sort of like shapes and you can see the topics that we're doing. So we're going to try to aim for these first two sections today, guys. Our goal today is to get through what does it mean to be 3D and some solids. What is a prism? Perhaps we're gonna go through, learn some definitions. Maybe some of you know the words, that'll be great. If you don't know, we will certainly cover it for you guys. <clears throat> so we have, those two things that we're trying to go to. We're going to do some problems as well. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So <clears throat> chapter one is 3D solids. So I will be going ahead and um, reading this sort of like comic textbook for you guys this week. But at the end of today, we'll assign it for homework and you guys will be reading it on your own at home. Um, but next week, um, we will always try to make sure we um, cover some main points that you guys want to get. So <clears throat> here we have R and G 3D. So um, I'll kind of read through it quickly with you guys, but we have our two-headed monster friend over here. He says, you know, we really don't get enough culture in our lives. And the other guy says, yeah, this is nice. And they try to buy a ticket. They're entering a museum, it seems and it's an art museum. So let's take a look. <laughs> they have to pay for tickets based on how many heads they have. So our Hydra over here has to pay for a lot of tickets, unfortunately. So we're talking about a 3D exhibit. I've here they've opened a new 3D exhibit. And what is 3D? 3D stands for three-dimensional. And so some big words already perhaps. And a dimension is a measurement in one direction. That's what a dimension is. So that's a good point to pick up. So what's an example? A 1D exhibit. This line segment has one dimension. We can only measure its length. So a line is one dimension. <clears throat> Maybe there's something important to know. So now we go to 2D, two dimensions. This rectangle, for example, <clears throat> is a 2D shape because it has height and width. Those are its two um, lengths, two <clears throat> dimensions. Yes. So one important idea that we start to pick up on is that, okay, so all the shapes in display are two-dimensional. You got it. <clears throat> so everything, in fact, that we see on our laptop screen is two-dimensional. So yeah, right. All flat shapes, two-dimensional. You have their height and their width. So you can see all these shapes, no matter what they are. They're flat on our screen, so they're two dimensions. And another word for a 2D shape is sometimes called a plane shape. <clears throat> plane shapes have height and width, but no thickness. So there's no depth into your computer screen right now. So oh, let me zoom in a bit. Hopefully this might be easier for it to read. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but yes, hopefully this is slightly better. Yeah, plane shapes have height and width, but no thickness. Let me make this full screen as well. There, OK. Hopefully this is better. <clears throat> Plane is another word for endless flat surface. So 2D shapes, they're flat, so they can be called plane shapes. So 
Yes, if we're going a little too fast, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Don't forget, uh, feel free to mention in chat, anything like that. <clears throat> but now we're going to move on to 3D objects. So everything in like the real world, in the real world. If I hold up my phone like this, it's a 3D object because there's depth to it now. It's not completely flat anymore. My calculator, anything. Yeah. Um, we ourselves were 3D objects. <laughs> so <clears throat> now you have three dimensions, three di dimensional solids. They have usually like a length, a width, and a height. So like depth or width is sort of the new third dimension <clears throat> that we're looking at. So, <clears throat> and it's not just the art is what they're saying here. All the objects around us are three dimensional, which is kind of what I just mentioned. <clears throat> Right. So I wonder what's in here. This person is looking at a zero dimensional exhibit. So there's no length, there's no width, and there's no height. So what could it be? Well, we take a look and they say, oh, it's just a tiny speck. <laughs> and the other guy says, I think that's the point, which is a little bit of a pun perhaps, but a point, a tiny speck, at some place in space. You, it's so small that you can't really measure length, width, or height. So it's just zero dimensions. In fact, <clears throat> a very specific point. So um, to kind of recap, this is the first section. The next section is a little different. To recap, perhaps, when we talk about dimensions, we are talking about something that you can measure. So. <clears throat> starting from zero dimensions, you have a tiny speck. It's so small that you can't really measure anything. If we move on to one dimension, we have a line. So you can measure how long the line is, but the line isn't tall and the line isn't deep. So that's one dimension. Now, something very common that we see is two dimensions. <clears throat> to recap, it's anything that's on your... Um, laptop screen, on your iPad screen, on your phone screen. Everything is two dimensions. It's flat. Um, you can measure how long it is, and then also how tall it is, maybe. Like this, sort of. Right. <clears throat> and finally, we get to three dimensions. So <clears throat> that's everything we see in our daily life. Because a lot of objects are tall, they are wide, and they're like deep. You can pick up anything around you. It's three dimensions. <clears throat> now, some of you might wonder, OK, is there a fourth dimension? One? Is there a fourth dimensional objects? And there are perhaps some things you could consider. But in terms of just, say, like length, there is not necessarily. So we do not have to worry about that, thankfully. Um, some, I don't know if any of you have ever seen it before. <clears throat> but some, um, say, like amusement parks will advertise things like, oh, six dimensional ride or things like that. But what they really do is they make you watch like a 3D movie and then they like blow air at you or things like that to add like extra effects. So that's not necessarily the kind of dimensions we're talking about, but it is a funny thing to consider. <clears throat> so, yeah, let us keep going then. Right, <clears throat> so this is sort of the next section. You can see the, the theme kind of changes in the book. So now um, we have our monster friends here at sort of like a, an army camp or something, gym solids. So we're gonna be talking about um, certain three dimensional shapes now. <clears throat> and this is um, a lot of vocabulary to keep up with. So maybe what I recommend is to, as you're reading these for your notes, usually you want to take um, bullet points on like a, a sheet of paper of what you think might be important. <clears throat> so uh, let's get started on this one. So today our monster friends will be doing some physical training, it seems. <laughs> so they're at a camp. Yeah, right. So they have an obstacle course here. It's made up of prisms, pyramids, and various other geometric solids. <clears throat> so you can see, you can look ahead. We're going to be covering some of these today. And if any of you know what these already are called, then uh, very good job. So let's keep on going, though. <clears throat> so 
we, uh, some of us might not have seen major groups of these three-dimensional solids, but we're going to look ahead. And our camp instructor is already asking, does anyone know um, what a rectangular prism is, what it might look like? And a lot of you might have seen it before, but you might not necessarily know that it's a rectangular prism. But our monster friend here knows that it is the big blue one. So now the camp instructor asks, what makes a, that solid a rectangular prism? So we're asking, why is it called a rectangular prism? <clears throat> so this is a pretty hefty panel right here. So I'm going to pause a little bit and try to explain everything, make sure you guys get all of it. Um, Right. Oops. Sorry. I may have left some people in the waiting room too long. All right. Well, we have a lot of people here today. Glad to see everyone. Okay. So, <clears throat> right. To sorry. So for those of you who just joined, I may have let some of you in a little too late. We covered um, three three dimensions. We covered what dimensions mean. Oops. And if Everyone can mute, please. That would be good. If you want to have your cameras on, that would also be great. So nice to see everyone. <clears throat> right. Sorry. So for everyone who just joined, we quickly talked about dimensions. Dimension, a dimension is something where you can measure length. So for example, if we have zero dimensions, we have a tiny, tiny speck. Let me let me go back really fast. Zero dimensions. We have a tiny speck. You can't really measure how wide it is, how deep it is, or how tall it is. So that's why it's zero dimensions. If we talk about one dimensions, we see this line right here. This line, sort of this laser line, you can measure how long it is. But that's the only thing you can measure. You can't measure how deep it is or how tall it is. That's one dimension. Now, everything we see on our TV screens, on our laptop screens, these are two dimensions. Because we because we can measure how um, wide it is and how tall it is, the height and width. So like this rectangle right here, two dimensions. Three dimensions is everything we see in real life. <clears throat> so this is something we're more um, uh, accustomed to. Something, anything, my phone, a calculator next to me. Yeah, these are all three dimensions because you can measure sort of the height, width, and the length of the object. <clears throat> all right, so now, we're talking specifically about three-dimensional shapes. And the first one that we're just about to talk about <clears throat> is called a prism. So here, this is a big panel. Let's take a look. So the first speech bubble that we see says, sir, a prism is a solid with two congruent faces that are parallel. So that might seem like a lot of words. Oops, sorry, I see a chat message. I can't hear the teacher talking. Ooh, OK. Um. I'm sorry, can, can, can anyone else hear me? I sure hope so. <laughs> I can hear you. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, um, maybe check volume then um, for that one student or something. Um, yes, I, I will definitely keep talking. So hopefully um, you can hear me soon. I'm sorry, oops. Okay, Let's see, maybe check volume. Somewhere, okay, e, okay, I'm sorry. Hopefully that gets fixed, but um, I have to keep going for now. <clears throat> Let's see, so a prism, that's what we're defining. So it's a solid, so a three-dimensional shape with two congruent faces. Okay, does anyone know what congruent means? Maybe they learned it somewhere before. Anyone like to share? Yes, no, <laughs> no it's okay, no worries. But so congruent just means um, when you're referring to shapes, it means they're the same shape, basically. Are you checked? Mm, oh, no. Okay. <clears throat> Congruent means that they're the same shape. So if you look at the top of... If you look at the top of this shape over here, you see these green panels? This is a rectangle, and this is the other rectangle. And these two are congruent because they're the same rectangle. They're the same like width. They're the same length. <clears throat> so and what does it mean by parallel? 
as we can see, these two shapes, if you like expand them outward, if you expand them outward, they stay parallel to each other like this. Whoop, like this. They are going like in a straight line forever. Now, if these shapes are not parallel, then you might have it like this. <clears throat> and if you expand this line all the way down, you see that it crosses the other line eventually. So the two rectangles, just my hands, these are parallel. <clears throat> and so these congruent faces, mm, Zoom. OK. All right, so these congruent faces, these green panels that we see here, these are called the bases. And these bases are important because we name a prism by the shape of its bases. So since these two parallel congruent um, sides, faces, are um, the same, um, these are the bases, we're going to call this a rectangular prism because these are rectangles, right? <clears throat> and that's what this guy says right here. The bases of this prism are rectangles. So it is a rectangular prism. So a lot of stuff going on here. Hopefully you guys caught it all, but I would be taking a lot of notes from this one panel if I was reviewing. So, <clears throat> so um, let's see. Yeah. Um... Uh, sorry, I'm doing a bit of quick messaging. OK, right, so quick review. Prism is what we're defining. So a solid with two congruent faces that are parallel. So congruent just means same shape, same size. And then the faces are parallel to each other, and they're just like one side of the prism. So a rectangular prism is called a rectangular prism because these two bases, the, the same uh, shape faces <laughs> are um, that shape. So these are rectangles as the bases. Therefore, it's a rectangular prism. All right. So now let's keep going on. Right. So more additional definitions down here. The flat sides of a solid are its faces. So this bottom, this part's flat. That's a face. This part's flat. That's a face. These are all faces. But in particular, we're looking at these rectangles. So two faces are parallel if they're in planes that never cross, which is sort of try, uh, what I tried to explain with this. Now, we've taken a look at what a rectangular prism is. So in fact, we can see that these shapes here are all prisms. And how do we name them? Well, that's just by what shape is the base. So let's take a look. We'll be going on here. Right, so as they go through this camp, let me, OK, maybe too much. OK, let's take a look here. So the first one on the left, a triangular prism. So the top and the bottom are triangles. And those are the bases. They're the same shape, same size. Now we have another rectangular prism, rectangles. A pentagonal, so five sides, pentagon. Next, we have hexagonal, hexagon. Now heptagonal, seven sides, and octagons on the top and bottom, so an octagonal prism. Yes. All right. So prisms, yeah. What you may notice is sort of that a prism is really just that one shape, and then you extend it. So if you have a 2D flat triangle on the ground, and then you pull it up, sort of think like that, that's what you get at the end, a triangular prism. Same with all of these shapes. You have it 2D flat, you pull it straight up, and then boom, you have that shape prism. <laughs> Not too bad. I think. <clears throat> yes, so octagon on top, octagon on bottom. And of course, um, the shape doesn't necessarily need to lie um, straight up and down like this. You can have it lying sideways, and it's still a prism. You have a triangle in my hand like this. You pull it out, that's still a triangular prism. All right. <clears throat> yes, so another thing you may notice is that the bases are connected by rectangles. So. If you look like on all these shapes, when you pull them up, it creates rectangles on the side, like over here. Hopefully you guys can see <clears throat> my mouse, what I'm pointing to. Rectangles all along the side, just from pulling out the shape. All right, so, so 
The next obstacle test your balance. They've got a balance beam and our camp instructor is asking, what do we call this polyhedron? So polyhedron, another big word, um, but thankfully we see a quick definition down here. It's asked, it says, mm, a geometric solid whose faces are all flat is called a polyhedron. So we take a look at this shape over here. This is a face and it's flat, certainly. This is a face and it's flat. And in fact, this face is the base. So this would be a triangular prism because you can see on the, uh, if you can imagine, I guess, on the other side, there's also a triangle. So what might not be a polyhedron? Sort of like a sphere would not be a polyhedron because its surface is not flat. It is definitely quite curved. <clears throat> so it's a triangular prism. Correct, let's go. Regardless of which face is on the bottom, a triangular prism is still a prism and the bases are still triangles. This is kind of what I mentioned earlier, where like you can have it going up this way or this way and it's still, you know, still the same thing. All right, <clears throat> so a new definition we're gonna learn right here is um, maintain your balance while walking across the edge of this prism. So the edge, boom, that thin line right there. And we have our definition. It says the lines where the faces of a solid meet are called edges. So. If we think about edges on a shape like this triangular prism right here, we have one edge identified, but there are many more. So on this base, this is an edge right here. This is also an edge right here. This is also an edge right here. This is also an edge over here, over there, over there, over there. So <laughs> what we'll take a look at as we look at more prisms is that there's a way you can count them up because a triangle has three sides. So that's three edges. And you know you have two triangles because there's one at the bottom and one at the top. So that's at least six edges already. Now to make the prism, when you pull it out, you create edges at each sort of like point, at each vertice. So there's three more edges. So in total, our triangular prism here has nine edges, but we will look more into detail that again. So next, we're gonna talk about pyramids. I'm sure some of you have seen pyramids before, <clears throat> but there are many types of pyramids that we can have. <clears throat> the most regular one that we see is sort of just this pyramid over here with a square base. So the base is the most important part for a pyramid as well, because the base determines what we call the pyramid, this shape at the very bottom. So, <clears throat> and let's see, more definitions, more definitions. So we see this word vertex. The faces of a pyramid are triangles that meet at a single vertex. So vertex is a point where edges meet. So we just defined edges and now we're using edges to find vertex. So if anyone's ever confused, just make sure you sort of like take a step back, review, think what is an edge? So <clears throat> go back, we see sort of this is an edge. So in vertex back on this triangular prism, maybe zoom in a little, <clears throat> back on this triangular prism, um, would be this edge meets this edge meets this edge. So this point right here. So basically corners, <clears throat> if you think about it, are vertexes. Yes, just another fancy word. <clears throat> right, so let's take a look at this pyramid. How many vertexes do we have? We have one vertex here, one there, one there, one there, and one there. So that makes a total of five vertexes. And what you'll just see is that the number of vertexes just changed based on your base, sort of mostly, all right. And here we have a special vertex just for pyramids um, where the triangular faces, so triangular faces, these guys on the side, triangle here. Can I, can I draw this? Yeah, yeah, let's go, okay. Draw, so triangle face, Whoop. oh my goodness. All right, <laughs> triangle faces here, that's one. We have another one on this side. Please excuse my bad lines, but yeah, those are all triangular faces. And so where they meet at the top, this is a vertex, but it's a special vertex that we can call the apex. I don't know if any of you know of the term apex predator, but that comes from sort of like a pyramid when you talk about the kind of like food chain and the food like pyramid who stands at the top of it is an apex predator. So yeah, that's another tie-in. Hopefully, maybe some of you guys know that. Maybe it's new. 
that's good either way. <clears throat> so now we look at naming different kinds of pyramids. We have the square pyramid, square base. We have the pentagonal pyramid at this bottom part. We have the hexagonal pyramid over here, so six sided. To the heptagonal pyramid, seven sides. Octagonal period, pyramid, <laughs> eight sides. And boom, now they're on the other side. So yes, the important point here is that a pyramid is named by the shape of its base, which follows the same idea as prisms, thankfully. So it's an important idea. <clears throat> so we read a little more. There's only a few obstacles left. So one sh important 3D shape that we want to know is a sphere. So it's just like a ball that we see a lot, a basketball, a soccer ball. All of those are spheres. Now, a cylinder, um, what might be common is just like a can in your pantry, in your closet somewhere, a food. So those are cylinders. Uh, yeah, this guy over here. Let's see. And finally, we're looking at a cone over here. So this is sort of like an ice cream cone. Um, just like flipped upside down. So if you flip it back up over the other way, you got yourself an ice cream cone and it has a word cone in it. So <clears throat> let's keep going. Yes, spear is math word for ball. Cylinder is like a prism, correct? Exact, exactly right. But its circles are bases. So you have a flat 2D circle in your hand. You pull it up, that's a cylinder. Mm -hmm. A cone is like a pyramid, but its base is a circle, right? So yeah, these two, cylinder and cone, you can relate cylinder to prism more, you can relate cone to pyramid more. Mm -hmm. But all three of these shapes, the important part is that they have circles in them, if that's what you notice. Um, the sphere is a little hard to think about, but it does, it does have uh, circles. <laughs> right, so now let's see. They run through all the courses after reviewing, and it looks like they get through everything pretty successfully. So good job to them. And that is all we really want to go through today. These are some extra notes on 3D prisms that perhaps we can look at next week to sort of review um, what happened this week. <clears throat> so um, any questions on the notes? Anything like that so far? This will be assigned as sort of like your homework next week, so you will be reading this on your own. But if you have any questions while you're reading, be sure to take note. You can ask them in class. We'll try to answer them for you. Yeah. So just be sure as you go, write down some notes that you think are important. And then at the end, I would say review those notes. Make sure you know what you wrote down. And if you can, group the notes together into sort of like bigger topics. That might that might help you. That might help you. Um, sort of organize things and maybe understand more. So, all right, one more time from the top. Um, <laughs> maybe I review a little too much, but um, I would cover for dimensions, zero dimension, one dimension, two dimension, three dimension, give an example for each one, you know, make sure you know just like what the word dimension means, that you can like measure length, measure something. <clears throat> and then after that, we started talking about shapes. So prism is the first big definition we knew about. If you want, you can, break down the word prism and all of its definitions from sort of this panel. Next, um, you, we talk about naming. We talk about what a triangular prism is, what a rectangular prism is. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> um, we talked about sort of like edges, I think. Yes, yeah, so we talked about edges. We also talked a bit about, um, we started talking about pyramids. So you can talk about like vertexes as well, because that's where that comes up an apex, perhaps, if you want. Then you talk about naming as well. And that's, of course, based on the base of the pyramid. So yeah, some important things to pick up. Um, but with this, we should be pretty set to start working on some practice questions. So I will go ahead and switch over there. Let's see. Oop. All right. So let's quick check on time. Okay, we're doing pretty good on time, so we should be able to get through a good amount of practice questions, which is good for you guys, because whatever we don't finish here today, we will uh, send you guys for homework. So <laughs> let's hope we get through a lot then. <clears throat> so let's take a look. 
All right, let me zoom in. Hopefully, we'll make it easier to see for you guys. If any of you want to zoom in more, just let me know. Right, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Compute the perimeter and area of each polygon. All right, first question here. So perimeter and area, we did not talk about it here in this lesson just now, but I'm assuming we have covered it somewhere before. So hopefully we know that. Otherwise, we can certainly talk about this. <clears throat> so let's take a look at just question one here. Compute the perimeter and area of each polygon. Remember to include units where necessary. So <clears throat> for one over here, we have the perimeter is just like sort of the outside boundary of our shape, the outside of our polygon, the outside length, if you will. So we just add up all these sides, basically. So we get 17 plus 13, which is 30, and we get 5 plus 5, which is 10. So that makes a total of 40 for this. Oops, turn on draw. Here we go. OK, 40. And then it's important to keep your units because it could be 40 anything. We don't know what it is. In this case, we're talking about inches. So 40 inches. Oop, there we go. So our area, let's see. So <clears throat> when we are looking at the area for a shape like this. This is a trapezoid. Um, so we can use the trapezoid formula. If we're less familiar with that, we can always be safe and break it up into two shapes here, which is very convenient for this question. Two shapes here. And a triangle and a square. And maybe we remember the formula for those. So if you want to do it that way, you can do it this way. So um, a triangle is one half base times height. Square is just the side, the side um, squared. So, like we'll call it like a squared. So then, if we say like one side of the square is a, so a triangle. If we take a look, it'll be the base. So the base here is five because this is part of the square. So base times height, which is 17 times 5. Let's just check that. <laughs> All right. 17 times 5. So that is 85, and you have to remember to divide it by 2, so 42.5. So that part is 42.5. And then this square down here, 5 times 5. 25. <clears throat> 25. All right. And then you add that up for our total area. So that is going to be 67.5. And then what are the units? So when we're talking about area, it's our original dimension, but squared. Because in fact, we're talking about two dimensions. So that's kind of that's kind of wild. Now we kind of it's a good tie-in. And now I don't know if we've talked about volume yet, but when we're looking at 3D shapes, sort of like maybe um, this like cylinder almost, when we talk about what is the volume of that, um, we, it'll be in the dimension, the original dimension cubed because three dimensions. So that's, uh, that's good to know. <clears throat> it, it would be like inches cubed or feet cubed, things like that. Um, let's keep going uh, on to different questions. Let's see. <clears throat> so, what is the perimeter of a rectangular pentagon with a side length 35 centimeters? So, this question is just sort of checking, oh, do you know what a pentagon is? So, pentagon, penta 5, so a five-sided polygon, five-sided shape. Let's see if I can draw one here. That doesn't look too bad. Boom, there we go. <clears throat> so, um pretty straightforward one side is 35 centimeters so if you go around the pentagon we have five sides 
And that's exactly what the perimeter is. We go around sort of like the <clears throat> length of the shape, the not exactly the length, but like the exterior length perimeter. <clears throat> so 35 times five, let's take a look. Boom, we get 175. So relatively straightforward. CM, got to make sure to remember your units. Otherwise, you could be talking about 175 giraffes, and that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so four, what is the area of a right triangle whose leg lengths are seven millimeters and 13 millimeters? So more sort of definition stuff. Um, I'll sort of draw this one out for you guys because I'm not sure what we, if you've covered it before, but the legs of a triangle are the two, are the, is the right angle section. So here we have our right angle, and then you would like fill in, you would connect those and that would make the triangle. So these two solid lines that I've drawn over here are the legs. And which one is which? Well, it doesn't matter too much, but we know that 13 is longer. So we'll put that there and seven is here. And you want to fit in your units in if you can. Oop. Right, so this one is not too bad. So I'll leave you guys definitely to just sort of fill in the answer yourself later on. <clears throat> but um, just making sure we know what leg lengths are. Yeah. Oh, and this works because it says right triangle. So, <clears throat> Um, these are most clearly the legs. If we have other triangles, it's a little weirder because we're not as sure what the legs are. Or we are, but uh, the legs would still be this and this here, I think. But <clears throat> this just sort of sets up the shape much nicer for you. Right triangle. All right. So square with side length 4 meters is cut out of a 5 by 6 meter rectangle. What is the area of the remaining shape? So um, we see the word cut out, and that kind of gives us a hint as to what we should do. So drawing is always important when we're talking about shapes. So if you can, try to make yourself a little drawing. So let's say this side is six meters. Oops, let me maybe do this and zoom in, maybe a little too far away. Oops. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Let's see, sorry. All right, so <clears throat> we are looking at this over here, six meter rectangle. <clears throat> so um, it's a five by six meters. So the longer side is five meters, shorter side is five meters. And we have sort of a square cutouts. Ooh, okay. I should have drawn this better. Let me, <laughs> let's extend this a little longer. Whoop. Okay, so then we have a square sort of like cut out over here, I'd say. So we would say that this is four and this is four. A little small, sorry about that. But right, so our out of our shape, we're cutting away this rectangle. So it doesn't necessarily matter actually where you place it. For example, your, your square could be right in the middle. The idea here is just that since we cut it out, we're going to subtract. So we're going to find the area of, let's see here. We're gonna find the area of <clears throat> this rectangle. So five meter by six meter, that's 30 meters squared. And then we subtract the square. So the square, we know all the sides are the same. So that's gonna be four meters times four meters, which is 16 meters squared the end of that, we will get 14 meters squared of, and that is the area of the remaining shape, 14 meters squared. Yep, that's what we're doing there. Yes. <laughs> Let's see, so uh, question six, six equilateral triangles 
each with perimeter 16 feet. So some big words already. So we're looking at equilateral triangles. That just means that all three sides of the triangle are the same length. So uh, we have six of those, and each with the perimeter 16 feet are attached to a hexagon. So over here, this guy. So out of this one triangle, since it's equilateral, we can say that all three sides are the same length. <clears throat> so, oh, this is interesting. OK. Or uh, attached to create a hexagon. What is the perimeter of the hexagon? So <clears throat> we're, we're given here is the perimeter of the triangle is what's important to realize. We're not necessarily given this one edge, this one side. Instead, the three sides of the triangle equal 16. So to sort of get you guys sort of maybe started on this question, <clears throat> that just means one side of a triangle is 16 divided by 3. Because then, if you add back up all the sides of the triangle, which are equal, because it's an equilateral triangle, you will get 16. So that's sort of how you can check. And once you know the length of one side of the triangle, um, we have a hexagon. So that means six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides. Once you get the length of one side of the triangle, that is one side of your hexagon. So you take that, multiply it by 6, and then that will be your perimeter. So <clears throat> hopefully that makes some sense to everyone here. Let's see. <clears throat> so uh, what's nice about this homework is that we actually have um, sort of like a, it gives you more information. It explains as you go. A little bit of review, if you will. Very helpful. So we see we're talking about 3D or three dimensions here. And you can see height, width, length, three different things that you can measure. So geometric solids, a solid is something that is a 3D shape. It takes up space. So <clears throat> that's what it's mentioning here. Flat side is called face. A line segment where faces meet at sort of like here are called an edge. And a point where edges meet is called a vertex, sort of like that super sharp corner. <clears throat> right. Now. Review again, uh, a polyhedron, big word we might not remember, so they give us a helpful definition here. A polyhedron is a geometric solid, so 3D. Um, it has no curved surfaces. So the main idea is no circles, basically. Um, right, <clears throat> and um, whose faces are all polygons. So the faces, these faces are all polygons. Yep, straight line edge shapes. <clears throat> um, some bonus definitions here, the plural. If you have multiple vertexes, you can call it vertices. That's how you say that. Um, plural of polyhedron is polyhedra or polyhedrons. Both of those work. If you're talking about a bunch of 3D shapes. Yeah. And hopefully something that you guys have picked up, what he's mentioning here. When we draw 3D objects, we use dashed lines to show hidden edges. So normally, you wouldn't be able to see these dotted lines. Let me zoom in a little bit, make sure you guys see them. Normally, you wouldn't be able to see these sort of dotted lines when you are like when you have the shape in front of you. But um, they do that just to show clarity, just so you can see all the faces, all the edges, and things like that. Right. <clears throat> let's go. All right. Hmm, let's see. Practice time, practice, practice. So looking more at some 3D shapes. Let's go on. Yes, 3D. All right, so we're talking about faces, edges, vertices, some of the things we just defined. So let's look at question seven right here. How many faces, edges, and vertices does this polyhedron have? So this polyhedron um, has a name. It's something we are a little more familiar with. It's a cube. Right. OK, so does anyone want to uh, tell me how many faces, edges, and vertices this cube has? Anyone chat? Oh, yes, I see someone raise their hand. Thank you. Yeah, would you like to share? Um, Ryan? Yes, you can type. Yeah. Oh, or you can speak too. That works. Um, it has. Yes, let's start with faces. There are six faces. Wait, no, six one, faces. Two, four. Uh huh. 
Six faces? You are correct. <laughs> yes, yes. You can take a look, say one is back here, another one is sort of back there, one is on the bottom. So those are all the back sides. Now, if we look at the front, we have this one, this one, and this one. The dots are a little weird to look at, but yes, you're correct. Don't worry. Six faces. All right. Would you like to help with edges as well? Okay. <laughs> And I'll get to, oh, I'll get to the other people next. Thank you for raising hands. But so, edges for Ryan. Eight. <clears throat> Eight edges. All right. Let's start counting. Let's take a look. So, <clears throat> edges are sort of like the straight lines that we're looking at. So, here we have an edge, here we have an edge, here we have an edge, and here we have an edge. So that's four right there. And if you look at the bottom shape, which is also a square, we sort of can kind of like think ahead and see, oh yes, we should also have four edges on the bottom then, since you know the top and the bottom are the same here. But we have to remember these sort of connecting lines up and down. And there is another four edges there. So in fact, our total number will be 12. So you're sort of heading in the right direction, but um, just a little more that you had to count. But yes, thank you, thank you. So. Um, vertices, I think I saw Mag Maggie and Noah raise their hand next. Would you guys like to help count how many vertices we have? Eight. Eight vertices, all right. Let's take a look at that. So <clears throat> vertices are corners. So you're looking at sort of these sharp points. We see four on the top, four on the bottom. And yep, we have got everything. So good job, guys, yeah. <clears throat> our vertices here are eight. So I see some more hands raised. Good, good, good. <laughs> Let's keep going. So um, I saw Brandon's hand next, I think. <clears throat> so let's move on to this shape. <clears throat> this shape is polyhedron. Um, so Brandon, uh, how about this? Can you tell me the name of this polyhedron? Would you like to try that? Mm -hmm. um... This polyhedron. Uh huh. Right. Correct. Six sides on the bottom. Hexagonal. Hexagonal. <laughs> and then, is it? Triangular hexagonal. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. You kind of have the right idea. It's not um <laughs> necessarily triangular, but it looks. It has that like shape, right? That shape going upward and it has the apex. Do you know what word we're looking for? Triangular. Starts with a P. Any thoughts? Triangular. Triangular pentagonal prism. Okay. <laughs> Almost. So the hexagonal part you got down really well. So the it's the base. You see, it's the bottom of our shape right here, and all. All of it points up toward an apex, a vertice at the top, and that's a pyramid, right? So we have a hexagonal pyramid. So I, you're kind of getting at it with like the triangular part, but yeah. So that's what the that what is what the name of this shape would be, a hexagonal, six sides on the bottom, pyramid. <clears throat> so let's write that out quickly. Oh, pyramid. Thank you for helping out with that. Pyramid. All right. Um, okay, I will go ahead to um, Bruce for now. Um, so Bruce, would you like to help tell me how many faces this shape might have? Hello, hello. Six. six. Okay, yes. let us take a look. So six faces, sort of. So this may be a little harder to visualize, but um, let's look at all like the triangle parts at the top first. So if we look at the very front, we have sort of this face. Oh, okay. I see. I see you picked it up. <laughs> all right. Correct. Correct. We do have seven. So um, let's just keep going through, I guess. So at the front, we have this one, and then we have this one, and then this one. So that's three right there. Um, if we look at the back, at the dashed lines, we have this one. We have this one in the back, the dashed lines, and then this one in the back as well. So this makes for six 
um, six faces already, but we can't forget our face on the bottom, our hexagon at the bottom. That was uh, not a very good hexagon, <laughs> but that is a face as well. And it is a special face called the base. But so we see that we have seven faces. And what we realize for a pyramid is we can actually pretty easily um, calculate how many faces we have. For example, if we have a square base and we go up like this, if we have a square base, <clears throat> the number of faces is the number of sides that the base has plus one. So if you look at our, um, our square pyramid, it's a, more of a rectangle actually, but if we look at this pyramid, there's our four sides on our base. So there are going to be four faces going up and then we will have one face at the bottom. And yeah, so if you have a pentagonal pyramid, if you have five sides at a five-sided base, you'll have five faces going up and then one face at the bottom. And that makes a total of six faces. So that's a cool little um, thing we can pick up. <clears throat> and a similar idea can be actually developed for prisms as well. Yes, some faces. All right. Um, Keep going for now. Okay, I think I saw Eric's hand next after this. So um, if you are so willing to help, um, you, maybe you can help me figure out how many edges are on the shape. Um, there are 12 edges, I believe, on this. Um, 12 edges. Ooh, okay, okay. <clears throat> so all right, let's take a look. So we have in the front these solid lines, one edge here, one edge here, one edge here, one edge here. And in the back, some dashed lines, we have those. So there are six edges. And we can see that these edges are created at the, um, the corner of our base, sort of. So like at like this, at sort of like the corner of our hexagon at the bottom. So um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, see a hexagon, six sides. So yeah, we have six edges going up. And then the, he the hexagon itself, of course, has six edges. So you made sure to count that in. Very good. And that makes a total of 12. Yes, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> All right, I think I saw um, Renee, Renee's hand next. Oops, hello. Would you still like to help? I see your hand disappeared. <laughs> oh yes, um, if you can, maybe look at how many vertices we have. How many vertices does this hexagonal pyramid have? Mm -hmm. You can go ahead, Renee, or you can type it as well if you would like. Whatever works for you. Seven. Seven. Okay, yes. So we start counting them up. Boop, 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 boop. Boop. Six on our base. And of course, we do not want to forget the apex. So correct, yes. We do have seven vertices. And so we do this. We're looking at our number of faces and our number of vertices. And we're like, OK, cool. Is there another sort of like relationship that we can uh, recognize here? Whoops, this is a bad perspective. OK. Yes, so if we look back at our sort of, it's a rectangle again, not a square. But for this pyramid over here, we see, OK, so since it's a square, we know it has five faces. And then how many vertices are there? There are also five vertices. So it seems like we can do a few more pyramids to test our hypothesis. But it seems like the number of vertices will typically match the number of faces. Of course, who knows? Maybe there's some wild shape. But <clears throat> yeah, very good job, everyone. Thank you all for helping out. Um, we There are more of these that I'll leave you guys to do. I think you guys should be. Um, basically pros. I think you guys got it <laughs> for those next two. <clears throat> but let's take a look. So um, let's try out this question, actually. What, what time is it? Let's make sure. Ooh, OK. We are hmm, We're almost out of time. Let's see how much we have to do here. Ooh, OK. Whoops. <laughs> All right. We're going to try to go fast through some stuff. So um, <clears throat> I may not necessarily call on you guys, but if you have any questions, feel free to just ask me immediately. <clears throat> so I want to make sure I get some stuff done for you guys before you have to go and do this for some homework. <clears throat> OK, so a prism is a polyhedron with 
two congruent faces that are parallel. So some big words again, but just think about a prism. We see here we have a rectangular prism. In fact, they sort of like shade in the bases for you um, conveniently. And those bases, again, are what define the name of our prism, <clears throat> right? So um, some extra bonus things that we don't need to know immediately, but um, you can take some time and read through. So um, this is sort of a matching game over here for this practice. Let's take a look at these first two words over here, triangular prism and rectangular prism. So you just want to identify, oops, <laughs> yes, if, I, if anyone does need to leave, we can leave. I will be ending very soon in like a minute or two. So <clears throat> triangular prism, boom, we see here immediately that this is the only shape with sort of a triangle. And we can look at those right there. Uh, rectangular prism, we draw a line over here to 17. Um, I'm going to leave, oh. okay. Oh, yes, if you guys need to leave, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for coming in today. Um, we will see you guys uh, later in the week, next week, things like that. But for Thank those of you who are able to stay, oh yeah, no problem. Bye. Thank you guys for coming, bye-bye. If you can stay a minute or two, I will be uh, just doing a little bit more. So um, what we see here is that it might look a little weird. We might think, okay, wait a second, these are squares over here, but the prism doesn't always necessarily need to be like the long way, if that makes sense. We have rectangles right here. So this still counts as a rectangular prism because we're taking the rectangle and sort of like extending it this way, sort of, if that makes any sense. But yeah, so right, the number of faces, edges, vertices in each prism, we just did some of that. So I think you guys got that down pretty well. <clears throat> yes, um, we talk about pyramids here. We do some matching, more matching again, we'll do a little bit more. Triangular pyramid, remember, it's always the base that is important. So we are looking for a triangle at the bottom. And this one has, um, actually, all triangles, but so, you know, you can't go wrong with that. Uh, square mid, we're looking for a square. Boom, we got our square right there. And they, the square, it all leads to the um, the apex right there. So they may try to, like, trick you up, like, move the shape around. But the shape, it's still the same. So even if it looks a little sorted a little differently. Right. <clears throat> all right. It is 1059. So um, let's see here. You will write down some of that. We just look at a lot of faces, edges, shapes, and things like that. Um, so if you guys can, um, homework for next week, um, hopefully we can get it out to those who already left. But we're going to look at our guidebook, at our comic textbook. We're going to try to look at pages 26 through 38. So let me type some of this in chat if I can. So guide. 26 through 38, <clears throat> 26 through 38, and then homework, we're looking at pages 7 through 13. 7 through 13 is what we covered today. I wasn't able to reach all of you guys with the problems, so um, I'm sorry, um, some of the back parts might be a little more confusing, but we did cover everything, so hopefully you guys are able to get some of that done and figure some of it out. But um, thank you guys for coming today. It is 11. Um, so all of you have a great day. Uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Anyone who has questions can stay a little bit, but yeah, y'all are all, or actually I, I have to end the meeting now because another meeting is going to start later. So yeah. Thank you all. Thank you all. Um, yeah. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. <clears throat> thank you for teaching us. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Thank you for joining. All right. I'm going to end the meeting now. So bye everyone. All right.